Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the targeting pod for the A10. First you need to turn it on by flipping up this switch here. Then you go to your targeting pod page. You can see it says not timed out. That means it needs to warm up. It takes a couple of minutes to warm up. When it turns on you'll see this. The service button doesn't do anything. I'll talk about this button later. So right now we're in standby, that means it's not on. In the standby page, there's a control page, but none of these buttons do anything. And then there's two modes, air to ground and air to air. First, let's go over air to ground. First, to move it around, you need to set this as your sensor of interest. You can do that with your throttle right here. You hold the coolie switch here to the right like this. The other way you can set it as your sensor of interest is just by clicking the charging pod button right here. If you do that, you'll see the green square come around the corner. Then you can use the slew controller on your throttle to move it around like this. Right now we're in TV mode, but you can also change it to infrared mode. You can do it using the boat switch, which is this gray one right here. If you're in the middle, you'll be in TV mode. This is TV mode right now. If you move the boat switch backwards, you put it into infrared white hot mode. You can know it's white hot because it says W hot at the top right. If you put the boat switch all the way forward, it puts it to black hot mode. You can zoom in and out with the DMS switch. The DMS is this switch right here. You can press it forward to zoom in on the targeting pod, and you can press it backwards to zoom out. Also, you can change it between wide and narrow. Right now, we're in wide. However, if you press forward on the China switch, which the China switch is this one right here, if you press it forward like that, you could see we go to narrow mode, and then you can click forward again, and we go to wide. Also on the right side here, you can see this thing 63 meters. This number is the distance that is covered by one of the horizontal lines on the crosshair. So you can see here's the crosshair here. If we go from the middle all the way to the right with this white line here, that's 31 meters. This number on the bottom right is our slant range in nautical miles. That means from our A10 to wherever the crosshair is looking is 6.7 nautical miles away. On the bottom here, you can see it says area. This is our track mode. Right now we are in area track mode. That means the targeting pod is using the whole picture that it sees to stabilize itself. There's also point track and inertial track. You can put it into inertial track by pressing down on the TMS switch, which is this. If it uses inertial track, that means that it's using the navigation system to stabilize itself. If you're in inertial track mode and you click the TMS switch forward, you will go to area track. And if you click it forward again, you will go to point track. You can see point track, we have this box here in the middle. As you can see, I can put it on this tank right here and go to point track and it automatically centers on the tank. If you are in area track or point track and you're turning and the targeting pod becomes masked, then you'll see it switches to inertial area or inertial point. This means that right now it will be in inertial mode, but whenever it's unmasked, it will automatically switch back to whatever previous track mode you were in. Okay, let's go to the control page now. As far as I'm aware, focus reset doesn't do anything. This button will change the coordinates. Right now it's giving me longitude, latitude coordinates wherever I'm looking at the bottom. If I click it, it will switch to MGRS grid coordinates. If I click it again, it turns the coordinates off. This button will change the units that the reading is here. In metric, it will be meters. In US, it will be feet, and you can turn it off if you want. These two settings have to do with the laser, so I'll talk about those later. This friend setting here, if you turn it on, then friendly units will have an X over them. So you can see these green X's, that means these two tanks are on my team. If I turn it off, it takes the X's away. TAAF is the altitude warning. Here, you can enter the minimum barometric altitude you want to fly that, and if you go below that altitude, it will give you a warning. For example, I'm at 9,800 feet barometric. Let's say I don't want to go below 9,500. I can type in 9,500 here, enter it for TAAF, and let me get out of pause mode and go below 9,500 feet. Now keep in mind, you can see right now I'm below the altitude, but the warning's not coming on. That's because the warning only comes on if you have a really steep bank angle or if you have a really steep dive angle. So you can see my dive angle is more than 20 degrees and now the check altitude warning came on. You can see where your targeting pod is looking with your helmet mounted display. You can see as I move it around, the targeting pod symbol here moves around. You can also display the targeting pod video on your helmet mounted display. First, set your helmet mounted display as the sensor of interest. You can do that by pressing down on the coolie switch and then press left on the DMS switch. And you can see now the targeting pod video is there. You can click left on the DMS to turn it off. You can also see where it's moving on your map. You can see as I move the targeting pod, the diamond symbol moves. And you can see where the targeting pod is looking with this little diamond on your HUD. You can also bore sight the targeting pod. This will just make it look straight in front of you. You can do that by clicking the bore sight button here. You can also enter a number for how much you want it to bore sight. So you can see right now it's at 150. The bigger the number, the lower it will look. So you can see if I enter zero, 
and I click enter here, it just looks straight in front of me. Also, if you are in the original A10C, you can press backwards on the China switch. You just press backwards on it and it, that will also put it into boresight mode. To get out of boresight mode, you just slew it around. You can also slave your speed to where your targeting pod is looking by setting your targeting pod as the sensor of interest and holding TMS up. TMS is this switch right here, you hold it up. And now on my HUD, you can see it says TGB, TGP at the bottom. That means my speed is slaved to my targeting pod. Now you can see when I move my targeting pod, the cake symbol moves too. So that means my speed is moving. If you hold TMS switch down, it resets the speed to your steer point. You can place a mark point where the targeting pod is looking by pressing TMS to the right. Whenever I do that, you can see it creates mark point A. You can also slew the targeting pod to the current selected steer point. The way you do that is pushing back on the China hat switch. You hold it back like this, and you can see now the targeting pod is looking to my steer point off to the left. Right now my steer point is waypoint zero, but if I were to change my steer point to mark point A, you can see now my targeting pod is looking at mark point A. You can also make your targeting pod look at your current speed. For example, let's say I place down a mark point right here and make that the speed. Then what you do is you hold forward on the China hat switch, and now you can see the targeting pod is looking where the speed is. Okay, now let's go over the laser. You turn the laser on by putting this switch to arm. You use the laser by setting the targeting pod as the sensor of interest, and then pressing the pinky switch down here. If you press the pinky switch one time, you can see the L is blinking, that means the laser is on. If you press it again, the laser turns off. By the way, you may remember me talking about the slant range earlier, which is this here. By default, the airplane gets the slant range to where the targeting pod is looking using the navigation system. If you turn the laser on, it will get the slant range using the laser, which is a lot more accurate. Now let's go back to the settings that I was talking about earlier. If you click control, we have three laser settings. First we have latch. If latch is on, that means all we have to do is click the pinky button and the laser will stay on. If latch is off, that means we have to hold down the laser button to keep the laser on. Then these two settings are our laser codes. The top setting is the laser code, and the bottom setting is the laser spot search code. Now the laser code is the code that we want our laser to designate. The laser spot search code is the laser code that we want to look for. For example, let's say I want my laser to be 1588. I can type 1588 on my uh, upfront controller here and then I can click this button, so now my laser is 1588. Now let's say I wanna look for my friend's laser and he told me it's 1477. I type in 1477 here and then click this button and now my laser spot search is 1477. Now in case you don't know what laser spot search is, basically laser spot search allows you to look for someone's active laser. So let's say my friend is lasing that mountain right there. I would put my targeting pod at the mountain and then I'd click this button that says LSS and then you can see L search, it's searching for the laser. If it finds the laser, then it will say L track. You can get out of this by clicking this button here. You can also activate laser spot search by pressing backwards on the China switch like this. You can see now I'm in laser spot search and then you can click it back again and now I'm back to normal. Keep in mind that only works in the A10C2. If you are in the A10C original, you have to hold the DMS switch to the right to put it into laser spot search. You can also change the laser mode. There are three laser modes. It's laser, pointer, and both. Right now at the bottom it says L, that means we're in laser mode. If you press the DMS switch to the right like this, then it says P in pointer mode. Pointer mode is unable to guide weapons. It is basically just for using with night vision goggles so your friends can see what you're looking at. I will demonstrate that right now. So it's nighttime. I'm going to press DMS right to put my laser to pointer mode, and then I'm gonna press the pinky button, and you can see the P is blinking. That means I'm lasing. Now I'm gonna turn on my night vision goggles by hitting right shift and H and you can see there is my laser pointer. If I move my targeting pod around, you can see my laser pointer is moving around. The last laser setting is both. In both, it will fire the IR pointer and it will fire the actual laser. You can also change the laser mode by clicking this button right here. There's also a letter that will be here on the right. If it says L, that means the laser is active. If it says E, that means my targeting pod is slewing around. 
If it says M, that means the laser is masked. If it's masked, that means that something like the wing is blocking it so it can't fire. Also, there's a white dot on the targeting pod. As you move it around, this will show you where the targeting pod is looking in relation to your airplane. So you can see the white dots in front of us. That means the targeting pod's looking in front. But if I were to move the targeting pod to the left, you can see the white dot moves to the left. You can also adjust the gain and level by clicking this button and using these arrows to adjust it. Okay, lastly, we'll go to air-to-air -air mode. You can do that by clicking here. In air-to-air -air mode, there's a control menu. Focus reset doesn't do anything, and the latch on-on is the same as in air-to-ground mode. If the combat switch is set to on, then the laser is able to fire. If it's set to off, then the laser cannot fire. You can click return to get out of the settings menu. In air-to-air -air mode, you can still slew the targeting pod around like normal. However, I would recommend leaving it in bore sight and then pointing your airplane at the target you see. If a cross comes over the target, you can press TMS up and it will lock the target. Thanks for watching this video on the targeting pod and I'll see you later.